On today's episode of the Piedmont Motion Picture Show, we're taking a behind the scenes look at the making of my newest short film, The Pen, and that starts right now. Hey guys, Ryan Camp with the Piedmont Motion Picture Company. Thank you so much for joining me today. This channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So if that's your thing, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and let's become better filmmakers together. Last week I challenged myself to write, shoot, and edit a short film within a 24 hour period and that film became The Pen and you can go watch it right here. This week I thought I would take you guys through the step-by-step -step process of how I made the whole film from start to finish. We're gonna go over the gear I used, the settings I used, how it was shot, how it was edited, so let's get started. I shot this using my Panasonic GH4 with my Sigma Art 18 to 35 lens with the Metabone Speed Booster. I used my slick 505 QF tripod, and for audio I used my Tascam DR70D with my Rode VideoMic Pro. I shot this in the V-Log color profile using the Panasonic GH4, and I color graded it using my new Signature Series Log LUT, which you can check out for yourself if you visit our digital store, and the link can be found in the description below. This film was edited in Adobe Premiere Pro CC, and last but not least, I shot this in 4K at 24 FPS. If you'd like to check out any of this gear for yourself, I've got a link to my personal filmmaking gear kit in the description below. If you happen to buy anything using the links below, it doesn't cost you any extra, but you are supporting this channel, so thank you. Okay, so the night before I shot this, I decided that the next day, which was my only free day that week, that I was gonna try to shoot and edit a short film from start to finish in just one day and hopefully have it posted to the channel that week. For a while, I had been toying around with this idea in my head for a short film about a painter whose paintbrush uh, had some sort of magical qualities and was bringing to life the things that he painted on his canvas and eventually leading to his death. At first, this film was going to be titled The Artist and after sitting back and thinking about it and realizing that I didn't really wanna spend any extra money to make this thing, I kinda of scaled down my ideas a bit and instead of going out and buying paint brushes and a canvas and an easel and all that stuff, I decided to use what I had laying around the house, which were pens and pencils. This is called resource or no budget filmmaking. If you would like to see a whole video dedicated to making a short film with just using the resources you have, you can check it out right here. I've got a whole video dedicated to that. After deciding to use what I had lying around the house, I finally settled on the idea of a guy who just is drawing with his pens one day and notices that one of them is bringing things to life in the real world as he draws them. So I changed the title to The Pen. I woke up the morning of the shoot, I had my daily morning coffee, and I started planning out storyboards using the awesome Storyboard Animator app, which I highly recommend you check out. Once I had my shots planned out and the overall flow of the story planned out the best I possibly could, it was time to get out my gear and start setting up the shots and shooting. If you've ever tried to make a film completely by yourself or just film yourself, you know it can be hard to get cinematic shots uh, when you're not behind the camera being able to look at your composition. If you'd like to see a video on nothing but the tips and techniques I recommend when you're trying to make a film by yourself, you can check that out right here as well. I used my old trusty stand-in focus model to get the best focus in each shot. I set up my audio rig to start getting some recordings of the room tone, and I started going through my shots one by one. Over the course of shooting, uh, you know, some of the shots may have changed, some of my ideas may have changed, the story may have started going in a different direction, or just the shots in general may have started going in a different direction, depending on what's working and what's not working. That's just part of the process, especially when you're doing a run and gun type of film like this. I knew that I was going to have at least one or two shots where things that I was drawing in the film or crumpling up the paper were either going to appear or disappear in the frame. So to pull those shots off, I actually um, locked my camera down. I would get a clean plate where the item is not in the shot, and then I would get another shot where the item is in the shot, and I used opacity uh, masks to make the items appear as if they were appearing or disappearing before our very eyes. I also knew that in order to get the audience to understand what was going on in the story without using actual dialogue, I was gonna to have to have some scenes in the film where we were looking through the main character's eyes, seeing what his attention was on, um, how he was reacting to the different drawings and where he was looking. So I knew I was gonna to have to get some handheld shots um, 
you know, from the main character's point of view. I also knew that I had to set up and get some shots where you could see what I was actually drawing and I was going to have to actually draw these items that were going to be in the film. Now, I'm not the best artist, so this was kind of a challenge for me to get them looking um, pretty similar. So I, I actually had to do these shots quite a few times before I was happy with them. The last two shots in the film were an over the shoulder shot looking behind me where I knew the stick figure man was going to rise up and appear behind me. So I knew I had to get a shot of that and have enough space for him to appear behind me in the scene. And then there was the actual kill scene where you can see the blood splattered onto the table from what we're assuming is the stick figure man tearing into my neck and eating me alive or something like that. To create the stick figure man, I just drew him crudely on a white piece of paper with a black marker. I drew out his shape, I scanned it into the computer, brought it into um, Photoshop, created a PNG file, and then I brought him into Adobe Premiere um, and masked him out the best I could. I then used a combination of masking to make him appear behind me, blurred him up a little bit uh, to make him look a little bit more believable. And then I added uh, turbulent displays to give him some movement. And I also added some sphere eyes to him to make him appear as if he were breathing a little bit. For the very final scene, I set up my um, crumpled up pieces of paper all over the table in a nice composition. And then I actually used some spray theatrical blood to spray onto the table uh, to give it that nice spurting blood effect. And then I actually had the title being written out over this scene as the movie fades to black. If you'd like to see a video dedicated to how I did the uh, hand-drawn title sequence, you can check that out right here. After I had all my shots filmed and I was happy with them, I brought them into Premiere, organized them, and I started placing them in order so I could start telling my story. After lunch that day, I went back through it a few different times and made sure I was trimming things down, trying to make the story flow as best as possible, and also letting things kind of take their time so the tension could build up just a little bit. On a lot of the more static shots, since there was no one actually holding the camera on the shots I was in, I went back through and added some subtle movement using the scale effect to give the shots a little bit more um, motion. Next, I went back in and added in sound effects the best I could and tried to replace some of the sounds that might not have showed up in the actual audio that I was collecting while I was filming. I actually had a lot of trouble with the audio in this film because I was trying to get sounds of the pen uh, uh, hitting the paper so you could hear me actually drawing and stuff like that. I wanted that to be audible in the film. But when I cranked up my input audio, it made it really noisy. So in the final version of the film, I had to turn down a lot of that stuff and uh, not really exactly happy with how the audio turned out in this one. Kind of a learning lesson on this whole deal. The room was really noisy. I had cut off the air conditioner and all that good stuff, but you could still hear the refrigerator running. Um, just something to keep in mind if you run into a similar situation, you might wanna unplug the fridge, make sure there's nothing in the room making that low hum noise. Uh, a lot of the mics have a, a setting you can cut on there where it's going to cut out some of that stuff. But it just wasn't quite, I had it jacked up so loud in order to hear those really fine, small sounds. I should have had the microphone closer to what I was doing while I was filming. So you live and you learn. I then went through and mastered all of the audio in the film using a Adobe extension called Lander. They offer a really great service. Um, you can actually bring it into Adobe Premiere for free and master all of your audio. I've been using it on all of my new videos. Highly recommend you check it out. Lander, L-A-N-D-R. Check those guys out. So then it was time for the color grade. I then went through and added my signature log LUT to a new adjustment layer and went through and tweaked all the individual scenes, the exposure and the shadows and all that good stuff to make sure everything looked as even as possible. And that was pretty much it. If you haven't watched the film yet, be sure to go watch that as soon as you're done here. And question of the day, what would you have done differently in this whole process to get better results? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to buy some merch, support the channel. We got an awesome new t-shirt with our new mountain logo on it. You should be able to find that down below or just go to our Teespring store. Check out our digital store for that new uh, signature series, Log LUT. We also have some free stuff on there as well you can check out. Big thanks to our patrons who support this channel month after month to keep us going. Thank you so much. We love you. As always, I hope you found this video very beneficial. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan and I will see you on the next Piedmont Motion Picture Show. Bye-bye.